love days like this. It is almost time. Tonight, dreams will come true for 60 young men and their families on yeah. the big stage in Brooklyn. Yeah, finally, tonight's the night. The 73rd NBA draft is upon us. You know, it feels like we know how those first couple of picks yeah. are going to go, but you just never know. Anything can happen once the teams are officially on the clock. And look, our clock says we are just under one hour away from tonight's draft. Here are the storylines as we get you set. The top storylines, of course, Zion Williamson, the young man we all assume will be taken number one overall by the New Orleans Pelicans, who've had their eyes set on the Duke freshman to become the new face of their franchise. Once the Zion domino presumably falls, John Morant and R.J. Barrett are expected to go at picks two and three, respectively. Morant to Memphis to join the Grizzlies, Barrett to the Big Apple with the Knicks. So the real intrigue of the draft is expected to begin at pick number four. The Lakers will be making the pick on behalf of the Pelicans as part of the Anthony Davis trade. But who goes at number four? And will that pick be moved? Can't wait for that storyline. One of the biggest risers of the draft board right now is North Carolina point guard Kobe White. He had a private workout with the Knicks just this morning. And in the latest ESPN mock draft, White is projected to go sixth overall to the sun. But regardless of who goes where, tonight's the night the lives of many young men will change forever. Going to the team would like to take me number one. I mean, you can't think, you can't dream this any better than that. This is what every basketball player dream of is having the chance to play at the NBA level. And right now I have that chance. I'm built for this because I, I feel like I'm really, really ready for the challenge. If you know me, I try to make them, I try to make everything fun. So it's been quite fun for me. You know, you see how I am, you see what I've done so far in my career. I just feel like I accept the challenge and I'm really gonna give it everything I got. I mean, it's been weird, like <laughs> turning on ESPN or something. My name's just right there. Um, obviously something I'm not used to. I just have to be myself. I'm not trying to be nobody. I'm just trying to be the first on. ESPN NBA Insider Adrian Wojnarowski joins us now live from Barclays Center in Brooklyn with some breaking news. Woj, we just, just described what that fourth pick is all about, the Lakers selecting on behalf of the Pelicans, part of that Anthony Davis trade. What is breaking? What's going on? Well, Sage, now the Pelicans, uh, the Lakers will be, will be selecting on behalf of the Atlanta Hawks. They have traded uh, into that number four spot. They're going to give New Orleans number eight number 17, number 35 in tonight's draft, uh, a condition, a, a protected first-round pick next year that they have from Cleveland. And New Orleans sends uh, that fourth pick, Solomon Hill, uh, in his expiring contract, uh, the number 57 pick tonight, and a future second-round pick to the Atlanta Hawks for the fourth pick. And with the fourth pick, Atlanta's GM, Travis Schlenk, is targeting Virginia's DeAndre Hunter. This has been the player he has been uh, pursuing throughout this preseason. Last year, he went up and he made the deal with Dallas to select Trey Young. This year, he moves up to get Hunter. Uh, that's a pretty uh, uh, that's a pretty significant core they put together uh, with the Hawks. And New Orleans continues to expand this Anthony Davis deal, get even more value, more picks uh, from that. Uh, trade last Saturday. Yeah, and, and again, we were saying just a minute ago, who knows what's going to happen with that number four pick. Now we know 8, 17, and 35. So, Woj, we'll let's start with the Pelicans. Give us the mindset of David Griffin now, the new GM there, who's making all kinds of moves. Well, you know, they wanted to see what the marketplace would hold for number four. Uh, Minnesota was really aggressive trying to get up into that spot. Uh, but Atlanta having three of the top 17 picks, uh, you know, gave them the opportunity to do this and the cap space to take on Hill's contract. And, you know, now, you know, listen, David Griffin can draft at 8-17 and 17 tonight. He could go back and look for another trade here uh, and move those picks. So he's got a lot of flexibility. But that original Laker deal that included three first-round picks, you know, now it's become four or five picks. That Cleveland pick next year um, that's, that goes to... Uh, the Pelicans probably turns into two second-round picks. It's heavily protected, uh, but I think both GMs really got what they were pursuing here. Both had a lot of flexibility, multiple picks to play with. And you look at the Atlanta Hawks, too, Woj, and a year ago getting Trey Young, and of course he's up for Rookie of the Year. He had one heck of a rookie season with the Atlanta Hawks, but overall, on a national level, we don't hear too much about Atlanta. Describe what's going on with this franchise as they try to climb up the ranks of the Eastern Conference. They've just done a tremendous yeah. job there of, of maximizing these picks. Not just Trey Young last year, but Kevin Herter, who they also got 
in the first round, and and in this, you know, and then uh, John Collins, who's uh, uh, was the first pick Travis Schlenk made in Atlanta. Lloyd Pierce, you saw the improvement in that team last year as they as they went on, and they're a young team that is already very competitive. Uh, another year of watching these young players grow, and then all of a sudden, maybe Atlanta is a team that, with their cap space and 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 how clean their financial books are, they could be out in free agency. This is exactly how ownership uh, in Atlanta imagined this going with the multiple picks they had going forward. Uh, Travis Schlenk has maximized, uh, you know, a lot of those at bats in the draft, and and he'll move up tonight and. Uh, his plan is to take DeAndre Hunter from Virginia, maybe the best defensive player uh, in this entire draft. Yeah, so recapping Woj's breaking news once again, the Lakers will now be drafting for the Atlanta Hawks with that number four overall pick, while the Pelicans take home, of course, the number one pick, we assume is Zion, also 4, 17, and 35. And hey, we still have almost a full hour to go before <laughs> the draft begins. Adrian Wojnarowski with the very latest. Stand by. If we need you, we're going to come right back out to you, Woj. Thank you. Coming up with Woj tweeted this. Atlanta has acquired New Orleans' number four overall pick in the draft for the eight, 17, and 35th picks. League sources tell ESPN. Pelicans are sending Solomon Hill, the number 57 pick, and a future second round pick. So there you have it. The breaking news less than an hour before the draft, t- draft tips off here on ESPN. And Woj just goes on to say that Atlanta's pursuing Virginia's DeAndre Hunter with that number four pick. Hunter, the National Defensive Player of the Year, the former Virginia guard who saved his best college game for last, a career-high 27 points in the National Championship game win for UVA, could be going now to Atlanta. Freeze from the gun, takes a snap, goes to the near side, hit early, the flag! No, get one. Early hit on Tommy Lee, shot pain is all the way down to the 10. Unbelievable no call. I just heard the crowd go crazy and I was like, oh, this is a flag. I don't know if it was ever more obvious. Pass interference. Then I got up, he said incomplete. I was like, oh. After months of discussion, the verdict from that fateful play is in. The NFL's competition committee finalized its new rule for reviewing pass interference. Coaches will be able to challenge PI calls or no calls up until the two-minute warning of either half. And plays in the final two minutes or overtime will be subject to booth review as is for other plays. Lastly, Hail Marys will also be reviewable. This rule will cover the 2019 season after which owners will decide whether to extend, tweak, or eliminate in 2020. Just one play. These changes. I'm just going to shake my head right now. Right? I'm glad you're here. We're about to go down a wormhole, yeah, my friend. It, it, this could have a major impact this upcoming season. It's great to have NFL insider Jeff Darlington join us. Let's take this back here. We've gone back and forth with this discussion the That's last right. three months on giving the coaches power inside two minutes to challenge a P.I. call. Right. And now it was taken back. Taken what are you back. hearing from the league and coaches around the league? I just heard from one head coach, for instance, who said this whole thing is – uh, an F word I can't say on television. Yeah. That's how coaches are feeling we'll right now. freak show. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This, is not, this, this, uh, this has uh, chaos written all over it. And it's a situation where the league feels like they're trying to react to the obvious, the Saints situation, right? Well, I can tell you right now that coaches are now looking at this fearful. Fo- coaches will now have the opportunity to challenge inside two minutes. The league's saying, we don't want just coaches throwing out a challenge flag that they hold in their pocket for the heck of it just to let the referees see what happens. The problem here is... Anything is now reviewable once you open that review up. It's essentially, when we're seeing in the Women's World Cup VAR, yes. this whole thing, we're going to see that in the NFL essentially this year. Every passing play inside two minutes, if there is any contact whatsoever, could be opened up for review, not just of pass interference, Kevin, for any other foul that was committed on that play. We're opening Pandora's box here. It's unbelievable. Inside two minutes to go in every half. We'll see how this plays out. I don't know if I'm overreacting here. I don't think I am, Kevin. Uh, again, this this could be a, a huge monumental ruling in 2019, of course, as we try to figure this out. That's right. This week at the NFL Media Summit, an example that the league used on the new pass interference review rule was this play coming up, week 15, Chiefs Chargers. All right, 28-21, Chargers are down, 13 seconds left. Phillip Rivers, Mike Williams, incomplete, but there's a flag. It's ruled pass interference on the Chiefs. Andy Reid can't believe it. As you can see, Williams also pushed off on the defender the NFL ruled this would be offsetting penalties on both players instead 
The Chargers get a new set of downs. They would eventually win this game 29 to 28. That's a critical call there That's when you fine. look at that late in the season. But the rub there is the fact that now you have offsetting penalties against both guys. And in that play, it was also described to the people who were in that meeting that anything else is open to review within that very play that we're looking at right there. That will be the case in anything inside two minutes. Anything that is supposedly reviewable. So it's, it's not like if, if they see somebody holding, you can't, no, re you can't review No, but, but if you want to make a, 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 an equation, like if we look at basketball, it'd be the equivalent of trying to review a foul. Like it's, it's, it's that crazy. Now, there are a lot of times when in training camp we think of a rule, the, the, the head down rule and all that stuff, and it doesn't turn into a big deal. This is going to be a big deal. All right, this feels like it's going to take preseason and the first few weeks of September <laughs> to get an idea of what's going on. I'm glad you're here to clear I don't it know up. if I helped, man. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> More breaking news, guys, from the NBA. Thanks to our Adrian Wojnarowski. Another trade. The Minnesota Timberwolves have traded the number 11 pick in tonight's draft. First round, of course. And forward Dario Saric, who was the 12th overall pick in 2014, to the Phoenix Suns for the number six pick in the draft. League sources tell us here at ESPN. Don't tell us. They tell Woj that here at ESPN. So stay tuned as another trade taking place as we get to set for draft night beginning 40 minutes from now here on ESPN. How about those Boston Celtics? They begin the night with three first-round picks, number 14, 20, and 22. But... That sounds great, but many questions are ahead as we get set for the draft. Think about what's happened over the last six weeks with Boston, the heavy favorite in the East this season. Early exit from the playoffs, the drama, disappointment. They attempted to acquire Anthony Davis. That failed as their rival Lakers pulled off the blockbuster trade instead. Then there's the all-star Kyrie Irving, expected to opt out of his deal and become a free agent. He led the team in scoring and assists this past season, but questions about his leadership, among many other things, tainted the season. And big man Al Horford has decided to opt out of the final year of his contract as well. After initial uh, optimism, the two sides were unable to come close, come even close on a long-term extension for Al Horford. Longtime Boston sports reporter Jackie McMullen joins us now live here in Sports Center from the Celtics practice facility outside of Boston. And Jackie with Kyrie and Al seemingly on their way out the door. What is the state currently of the Celtics team? Well, I think it's fair to say, Sage, we're in a little bit of disarray here in Boston and, and quite a bit of uncertainty. You mentioned the two most important veterans, uh, Irving and Horford, are likely gone. You can probably add a third, Aaron Baines, possibly out the door. And then consider that a fourth, Marcus Morris, can leave as an unrestricted free agent and you get nothing in return. So this team is going to look very different next season. That much is certain. Yeah, it's amazing to think of what we were all saying about them Less than a year ago, really. Right. So, I mean, how things change. As far as tonight's concerned, three first-round picks, again, 14, 20, and 22 overall. Depending on how everything plays out ahead of that, Jackie, what is their plan with those picks tonight? Well, Sage, they've already been delivered another blow. They were they were talking to the Pelicans about that number four. Mm. It's number four pick, offering multiple picks and other things. That's off the board now. The Atlanta Hawks have that pick. The Boston Celtics don't want all three of these picks. I think you'll probably see them either trade them for future picks. Remember now, in the 2022 draft, high school kids can go directly from high school mm. to the pros. So maybe they go for a future pick or they stash a player overseas, which they've done in the past. But nothing good has happened for the Boston Celtics since they traded for Kyrie Irving two years ago. It's wow. just been one calamity after the next. Yeah, it's Truly. been crazy insane to watch from a distance. You've been right there front and center and you'll be there for us all night tonight. I mean, from a disappointing season to the health issues, what a year for Danny Ainge. Jackie Mack keeping us okay. up to date from Boston. Kevin? The opposite of that feeling is the Pelicans tonight. Yeah. Because there is Zion Williamson looking I love clean. the food, huh? I, I, I am a big fan of the all-play. <laughs> he is ready for big things tonight on the stage with Adam Silver. Mm. And just about an hour as we get you set for the NBA draft. And Zion and the Pelicans are on the clock. And speaking of on the clock, how about two big Woj bombs in the last 20 minutes? Teams are moving up in major trades. And the Hawks acquiring the fourth pick from the Pelicans. Targeting DeAndre Hunter, the very latest coming your way after this.